Hello and welcome back to another tutorial on Power Pivot. This is Trisha Chakyani, and in this tutorial, I am going to start with the DAX functions. Well, in the previous tutorial, you had seen how to perform the simple calculations using the Power Pivot window. In this tutorial, we will learn how to start using the DAX function. And in this tutorial, I am also going to cover the first very important DAX function that is available in Power Pivot. Let's look at first the example sheet that I have here and we will know what function that we need to use. In my example sheet here, I have the sales data which has the product ID, the product name and some more information along with the sale price, the quantity of the product that is being sold and the order ID given to me. I have another spreadsheet which has the customer detail given to me and the customer information includes the customer ID, their customer name along with the other details like the state, city, country that they belong to and the order ID is available for that customer. Now what I need to do is I need to know which customer has complete or which customer has given us how much revenue. So if I want to identify that what I'll need to do is first I'll need to get the sale price into this particular database and then also get the quantity into this database and multiply both of them to get the revenue for each of the customer. It can simply be done by using a VLOOKUP function in Excel. But that is you will have to create a VLOOKUP function which is little complicated Plus, it also increases the size of your spreadsheet. To avoid all these things, we are going to use the power pivot method to perform the VLOOKUP. Just like in Excel we have VLOOKUP, we also have a function in DAX or in power pivot which works exactly like VLOOKUP. Let's see how does that work. So I'm going to begin with going to the power pivot window. We have already seen if I want to add a table to the data model we first convert it into the table format but if you have a data which you cannot or you do not want to convert into the table format directly start with adding to the data model that can also be done and the data model screen or the power pivot screen will allow you to add that into the table format so you can see on my screen right now when as soon as i clicked on the add to data model it starts running and it is now trying to open the data model screen for me or the power pivot screen for me. Okay, and now it is opening up the power pivot screen. Once it is open, you will see that how it actually allows you or asks you whether you want to create or convert this in data into the table form the same screen that you can see when you are trying to create the table the first time so I'll say ok and it will start working to create this into table you can see that the data model screen is open or the power pivot screen is open now once it loaded you will see that the table name it has automatically picked up just like Excel pickups picks up a table name when you create a table power pivot window also picks up the same way the table name automatically now that table name need not be what you want so if you want to change the table name also you can just rename it in the tabs that you can see here so I'm going to double click on this and rename the tab to what best suits my data I'm going to call it customer or customer detail enter I'm going to minimize this not close it go back go to my sales data again go to power pivot and say add to data model it will again ask me to create a table and add one more table into the power pivot window and you can see that is named as table 2 Again, I can change that name and give the name as sales not sales data whatever suits or whatever name that you prefer to give now that I have got both the data what I need to do is in the customer detail screen I need to get the 
data from the sales data screen or the sales data tab. From the sales data, I need the sale price and the quantity. But before I can do that, just like in the VLOOKUP, you have the lookup value option which you try to match or create a relationship. In the pivot Power Pivot, you have to create a relationship to tell Power Pivot that these two data are the unique data and they are both matching or they are both there in both the tables or the databases. So I will click on the diagram view and create a relationship between the two datas that I have and as you have already seen how to create a relationship so I'm not going too deep into that I'm going to create a relationship with the order ID because order ID is the common data between the two. Now I need to also be very sure about this that when you are doing a VLOOKUP in Power Pivot or the VLOOKUP method in Power Pivot you have to be you where you want the answer you will start creating the model or the relationship from there. So you will pick the data from the sheet or from the table where you want the answer and drag it to show the relationship with the another table from where you want to pick the answer. So this is what I had done. Once I have done this, I can go back to my normal view that is the data view. And in the data view, once the relationship is created, I can go back to the customer detail and in the add column method, I will create or I use the DAX function, which is called as the related function. The related function, like I said, works exactly like we look up. So I will call this column as revenue to understand the relationship model and to add the columns. Please go ahead and check my other tutorials where I spoke about the relation, how to create the relationship and also add the new column. So I'm just going to add the new column, which is named revenue equal to when I'll start with the function relate. The, sorry, related. Open the bracket and here I will select it automatically picks up where it is related to which relation I have created. So I've created the relationship with the sales data which is the table which is next to it. What do I want from there? I want the sale price. So I'm going to pick up sale price, close the bracket and enter. As soon as I do that, Power Pivot will automatically check for the similar order IDs or the same order ID. And just like we look up gives the response with the information that I need, same way your revenue will also or the sale price will also be picked up by looking at the lookup value, which is the order ID in our case. Once I found this, I am not only want to do this. What I need is I need a revenue. Revenue can be generated by multiplying the sale price into the quantity. If you look at the quantity is also given in the sales data. I need to perform a VLOOKUP again. But rather than creating a VLOOKUP inside another column, I will do a VLOOKUP in the same column and multiply that with the sale price that I have already extracted using the VLOOKUP. So I'll do a multiplication and do a related function again. Open the bracket. This time I'm going to use the quantity. Close the bracket. Enter. Now what is it doing is it is going to check for the quantity as well. Just like it picked up the sale price, it will now pick up the quantity. And because I have given a multiplication in the middle, it will auto automatically multiply that data and give you the result. Now there seems to be some error with this data. So if I want to check what is the error, I can go back and see if there is some issue with my data. So if I go down and check, it seems the quantity has been missing and that's the reason you cannot find the exact data. Now I will go and make sure that the quantity is correctly there. So how easy it becomes for me to explore the data when I want to. If there is some error, it automatically picks up in the uh, answer results just like we do it in the video. So now what I did was I checked for the right quantity and I pasted it in all the columns to make sure all the data is now available. Now see what happens. What, because I have now changed the database, I will have to go back and see if it is automatically updating on the Power Pivot window. It is not. 
what do I do in such a case? Then just like the pivot table, I will go on to refresh it and then check if the new data that I have just added is automatically getting picked up in the power pivot. So what I did was I just went into the power pivot window and try to refresh it. Now the data is getting refreshed and you can see there's something running in the, at the background. While it looks like it is refreshed, but only your current file is refreshed and doesn't look like there is any change that has happened. Okay, so nothing has changed. Why is that the case? Because we just refreshed on we just click on refresh if we do refresh all only then will the whole all the tables which are there in this particular spreadsheet will get refreshed together so you can now see that the new screen which is showing up data refresh progress and this is refreshing both the tables that are there in the power pivot window so first it is refreshing customer detail and the sales data as well now when I go back, once this is refreshed, it's also showing two total. Once it is refreshed, it will show as a success whether it is refreshed or not. If there is an error, it will throw an error. If I cancel it, it will give me the result in the cancelled option. And you are on the right hand side, you can see it is getting refreshed. You can see the total refresh and the success is showing exactly the same. I can close this window and go back. Once I do that, you will see now that the window is still getting refreshed it's updating now you can see that all the revenue for each and every cell is showing up correctly because now whenever there is any change that i'm making to my database i have to ensure that i come back and then refresh my database just like excel you have the option to refresh and refresh now i'll create a pivot table from this data and click on ok the new pivot table is created. If I go on to the customer detail, you can see that my revenue table is now or the revenue column is now added to the table and it becomes part of the table now and you got the revenue. Now if I pick up any other data from this like region, it will accordingly give me the new revenue column which I have added to the power pivot. So it also saves your space. If you also space saves your sheet from getting very heavy because you're doing everything in the pivot table. So it becomes simpler and easier for you to perform this kind of calculation. Only drawback or only, uh, it will not be a drawback, but only difference between the Excel and the power, power Pivot is that, which I also mentioned in my previous tutorials, that when you're doing any calculation in one cell and for the calculated columns, it will automatically pick up the same calculation for all the cells in that column because you're performing a calculated column in excel if you're doing that you can still have change the calculation in other rows for that column so that is the difference between the two but it is much faster in power pivot if you are going to do a calculated column with the same data then i would suggest that you perform it in the power pivot itself everything is in the pivot Hope you like the video, You, it was insightful for you and uh, keep watching for more of such tutorials because I'll keep going to show you more uh, DAX function, the advanced DAX functions that we are going to do. So we are now starting with the important DAX functions and then we will move on to see the advanced DAX functions as well. Thank you for watching.